Hey guys, happy full moon here from me, LJ. And today I thought it'd be fun. I've been thinking about doing this for a little while on a video to share with you how you can give yourself your own card readings, how you can blend in something like play with oracle cards or even tarot cards as something that's a playful part of your practices, but something that you can do with yourself. I know a lot of us now are open to oracle card readings, tarot card readings, and also we have a belief that maybe we need to go to someone who's an expert or has a special power or talent or connection with spirit or the universe or the cards, right, in order to give us that reading, which I think that that is true. Some of us can have more time, more experience, maybe have special talents that help us read the cards in a way that's really helpful for, for others. But I've come to like the idea of playing with the cards on our own and that we can use it as a tool with ourselves, for ourselves, and even make it a part of what we could call our yoga, our practices of union and connection and reconnection and a way to, yes, get insight, guidance, and whether you feel like you're getting that guidance from some part of you, some part of you within you, maybe your higher self, maybe your heart, your soul, and or maybe your spirit team, God, the universe, however you like to call it, right? So wherever you feel like the guidance is coming from, and even if you just like to feel like it's an energy thing, like it all is, it's all energy, right? We're energy, our thoughts are energy, our feelings are energy, our focus is energy, right? And the cards are energy, so you could even believe that maybe what cards you wind up picking for yourself are aligning with what energy you're in right now. So that's where they can be a helpful and even, yes, playful tool that we can add into our practices. And yeah, I find that it feels like a playful tool, and that's why I like it, because I feel like I'm playing with the cards. And I'm realizing how nice it is to get a chance to just play within our practices. Like my friend Carrie helped me realize the other day in a conversation. And so playing in our practices with the cards. So here's what I like to do when I share this with people I get to work with in individual sessions or retreats, some of the work I do with people, how to share how to use cards for yourself. So I'm gonna share the process that I've learned from various people who work with cards and how I like to do this with myself, how I help turn others on to this as a tool that they can use with themselves. And then if you still wanna to go to a friend or someone else or someone who considers them an expert, maybe they feel like they're extra intuitive or something, go for it. And I think it can be helpful to get a reading from and with someone else. But I also think it's awesome to free ourselves up from thinking we need something outside of us, right? And that we can also play with the cards ourselves as we feel guided, whether it's once a week, once a month, every day, when we feel like we need it, right? Whether we wanna get some clarity or we wanna get some guidance, I find it just is always affirming for me. And one thing that used to keep me from the cards was if there was any idea that it might be predicting my future, which I know for me, I like to feel like I'm at least co-creating my reality. So I had resistance to this idea that my future is already known and these cards are gonna tell me about it. So I don't find that to be what I get from the cards. I find that it tends to be more just affirming of where I am at, what I am realizing, what I am going through, and just actually strengthens me usually, helps me feel more aligned with myself, what I'm going through, and my approach to that all, right? It might even refresh, renew, and refocus how I'm gonna go about my life and myself. So here's what I like to do with the cards and how I like to share them with people. So I have a few different decks right now and a lot of people like to have various decks just because they're beautiful. It's nice to go towards something you're drawn to, right? You like the art. Some people say that you're supposed to be given a deck from someone else in order for it to work. Again, I think a lot of these things are just up for you to decide what's true. I don't know that there's an ultimate truth or an ultimate teacher on this, but whatever feels true for you but something that resonates with you. So I'm gonna today work with this deck that my friend Denise gave me, and they're made by Kyle Gray, and they're called Angel Prayers, and you don't have to necessarily believe in angels, but all kinds of cards have different art on them, and then they always have sayings, and then they always come with a little book that's super helpful that you can use, so you don't have to just know what the cards mean. You can use the book to then go decode what comes up. So. Here's how I go about giving a reading to myself or 
sharing with others how you can give yourself a reading. So one trick tool I learned, and again, this may just be, believe, be one of those <laughs> that is true because you believe it's true, but because it's energy and we're energy, and especially if anyone else has used the cards or even the last time you used the cards, we can do something that we can see as clearing the energy of the cards with kind of a fun tool that you can just decide works to clear your cards. And that could be to make a fist with your hands and kind of tap on the cards is a technique I learned somewhere from someone. So I like to use it. So you might clear your cards by tapping on them like that. And then the idea is you want to shuffle them, do whatever you want to do with them, but you're putting your energy right now into those cards. So you're shuffling the cards. And I even like to use it as a time to do some of the things I like to do, like relax and breathe and just get a little more tuned into the moment, right? Because this is a form of meditation also, right? It's bringing us into the moment. It's giving us a chance to get into more of a listening mode. And so, right, the cards are, are becoming a practice moment for me, right? Bringing me into the moment, bringing me into myself. And so I add relaxing and breathing to anything that I call a practice. So I'm shuffling the cards as much as I feel like I want to, doing whatever I want with them. Maybe I clear them a couple times more. And then I might start to kind of come up with a question within myself for myself and the cards, right? And whoever, whatever entities or levels of spirit we want to feel like is in on this. So maybe it could just be like, what's true for me right now? Like today's this powerful full moon. So it could be a day to say like, you know, what card is going to show me what's true for me right now or a full moon reading. Some people, or you might have a specific question about something in life that you might bring up and you might even say it out loud or you might just think it in your mind, right? And then you get a choice there too. You might decide that you're going to pick one card. A lot of, and a lot of decks will even have instructions on various playful ways that that particular author has designed that you can use the cards. So you might decide to use one of their processes. A kind of a classic idea is to pick three cards and maybe some would say three cards could give you a little bit of an indicator of like past, present, future if you looked at the cards that way. Again, all this is really up to you in my opinion because you decide what's true and it's your practice, right? So then you find yourself, maybe you spread the cards, you're going to pick a card or however many you've chosen. I'm just going to go for one unless a card jumps out. So nice, you might spread them out in your hand, you might spread them out on the floor, you might do whatever you're drawn to do to just give yourself, or you might pick one off the top, right? So that's where, again, it's even getting you more in touch with your intuition to do the cards, right? Because you get to kind of feel out, feel into, just follow the impulse when it feels time to pick a card, and then spreading them if you feel drawn to one, and maybe you want to close your eyes and pick. And I do love the input that if a card jumps out, that may be an invitation, like you're definitely supposed to see that card if you like that. And so even if you've decided you're picking three cards and then a fourth one pops out, you might go with that one just to follow the uh, co-creation if you feel like you're getting into a spiritual co-creation with the cards. So you pick a card, right? So I'm going to pick this one. And then I love the input to take time to look at the image and first maybe decide like if some things are coming up for you or what you're noticing in the image that comes up. Like this is a man, like a man who's more like native or African-American or darker skinned with like an eagle tattoo on the chest and like a cosmic, ooh, like headdress. So to me, I can already feel like this is about like divine connection, right? And maybe there's some focus about heart. And so again, I can already start to see how these are some messages for me and maybe showing me, reminding me what I have been focusing on, what I am focusing on, what I need to focus on, right, at this time. And so then after I've taken some time with the image, and then one thing I've loved to learn from some of my friends who've taught me about using cards, uh, Cassandra and Fabian, have taught me to bring out the journal and write down what you come up with because it can be powerful to get it on paper and then look at it and work with that, right? So I'm not going to do that right now, but right now I might have already written down that I got the change in transition card for Archangel Azrael, right? So, and then it says at the bottom, thank you. And I might say this out loud as part of my practice. Thank you, Azrael, for leading me safely through this change. So I think these cards are an in, in invitation to play with the idea that maybe I've now connected with this angel if I wanted to, or I could just, you know, see how that makes sense for me or not. And then I can go into the book, right? And I can look for the change 
and transition card. Whereas often they're in like alphabetical order or something. And even with the tarot cards, you can look up what they mean. And each, each book is going to be a little different according to the author. So then I can read more about what this means, right? So the general meaning is I'm going through some changes right now. And I may not be enjoying them, <laughs> but please be assured that they're for my highest good. It says change is a natural process and we're constantly moving through different levels of development and experience so we can grow. Allow yourself to relax, knowing that the angels are supporting you through these changes. And then this deck goes into an expanded interpretation and more about Archangel Azrael. And I like, maybe would be taking notes at this point and just writing some of that down. And if I had pulled multiple cards, it's very awesome to see what comes up when you write down the meaning of each card. And then you might even go into like doing some journaling and just free writing about what comes up. So, yeah. And then when you feel like you've had enough, if you felt kind of unsure after you've given yourself a reading, you can give yourself permission to, maybe I want to pick another card for more, like more on this, or tell me more, spirit or self or whoever you feel like you're doing this with, cards, right? Maybe you want to pick another card, and maybe even one more if you feel like you want more clarity, or you've come up with another question, right, that you want to answer with the cards. So I think it's fun. I think it's playful. It's a spiritual practice, and my thing seems to always be about empowering us to use these things for ourselves. Even if there are experts and even if you already have a card reader in your life, I'm not saying don't go to them because that's beautiful, right? That they can be someone who's such an inspiration and such a help. But I, I think even they could enjoy the idea of you getting into using cards on your own with yourself for yourself more often. And yeah, especially because it might just feel playful. It might just feel fun. And then it might just help you really reconnect with yourself, with what's going on in your life. It might refresh you. It might replenish you. It might center you and definitely connect you more spiritually and even get you in that mode of connecting spiritually for part of your self-care, right? So yeah, oracle cards, tarot cards, that's how I like to use them for myself, give myself a reading, and I encourage you to try doing the same. So thanks for listening, guys. I hope you're having a good full moon out there. Namaste.